Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to show you how I made a set of clear cards using the January 2021 sheet load of cards. I hope you'll stick around, see what changes I make and see how I made them. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. If you've been around my channel very long, you know that I love to make clear cards. In fact, I have a whole playlist if you're interested in checking it out. I will make sure to link that in the description box below so when you're done here you can go watch those. I decided in 2021 I was going to make it a goal to make a sheet load of clear cards each month. I know that many of you have been inspired to buy that clear card stock that I've talked about and I wanted to show you some other ways you can use it. If you haven't seen my clear card videos or watch my clear card Q&A video, I did put a video out where I answer some questions and talk about the material I use. That also is linked at the description box below and I will also pop it up at the end of this video as an end card. There is lots of great information there for you. One reason I like clear cards is you can get lots of layers in depth without necessarily adding bulk to your card because I always put some elements on the inside of my card and some on the front. Today I'll be showing you how I alter the sheet load sketch just a little bit so I can turn this into a clear card. And also something different I'm going to do is instead of an image or sentiment I'm going to be using some stickers from the paper collection that I got out and instead of the fishtail banner, I'm going to use some of those scraps up in that area. So before we get started on the process, I'll show you a little bit more about what I'm going to use today. But as always, if I leave you with any questions, leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. One of the tools that I'm going to be using that is not one of my normal tools that you see in every video is my little Tim Holtz mini stapler. And also, of course, I'll be using the January 2021 sheet load of cards printable. If you haven't downloaded it yet, it is free for my subscribers and I will link the debut video below, which tells you how you can download that. For my clear card bases, I got out five pieces of clear card stock. It doesn't look clear now because there are tissue separators between each piece. I like to use the 10 mil clear report covers for my clear cards. I got out one piece of off-white card stock. This will be the piece that originally says image and or sentiment on the sketch. For my matting, I got out five pieces of prickly pear card stock from Gina K Designs. I thought it went nicely with these rain boots here, even though on screen this looks a little bit more green. But not only did it kind of match that, I thought it would pair nicely with the other two pattern papers. Speaking of pattern papers, I chose three pieces from the Spring Market Collection by Carta Bella. You have the rain boots, a floral, and then just a very light wood grain. And like I mentioned earlier, I will be using some of the stickers from the coordinating sticker sheet to make my focal points. Let's get crafty! The first thing that I did for today's cards was cut the pattern paper CS1 and CS2 per the instructions. But since I've already gone over this once, I won't bore you with that process. If you want to see that process clearly, make sure to check out my video from the second, which will be linked in the description box below. One thing I did change up from the instructions is I did not cut the little piece for the flag. I will cut that later toward the end of the video. Alright, I thought I would stop the voiceover here now and talk a little bit about how I'm going to turn this card into a clear card. What I usually try to figure out beforehand is what can go on the inside of the card and what can go on the front. 
Sometimes I just add a piece of white or off-white cardstock to the inside for my personal message, making sure it can be hidden behind the front, and other times I'll make an inner card. For this set of cards, I could use either of those two options. If I were to put the white cardstock, or in this case off-white cardstock, just a piece on the inside, I would need to hide it behind this area here that has like the blue graph paper look. But I also wouldn't want it to go past the striped paper over here on the right. So what I would do is measure from the edge of the graph paper over to the edge of the striped paper and cut it so it would fit behind this when the card is closed. The second way would be to make an inner card that when it is folded, it is the same size as the graph paper with its mat. So when it's folded, it would be five and an eighth inches wide by two and three quarters inches tall. To do that though, I would have to cut my piece of cardstock to 10 and a quarter inches wide by two and three quarters inches tall. Now I know that that might not make sense right now, but later on I am going to do at least one sample of that so you can see how the inner folded card works. Because for most of the cards, I'm going to be using the option where I just put a piece of off-white cardstock on the inside. So on the front of the clear cards, I will have PPB and its mat along with the image and sentiment strip. Let's get back to creating! Now I'm going to cut down my clear cardstock for card bases. This material cuts very nicely in most trimmers. I have tested it with the little trimmers that just have that small triangle blade and those cut through it as well. Once I have that cut in half, I just fold that with my fingers. Now I do go ahead and bring in a bone folder just to kind of crispen that fold up and make sure it lays flat, but you don't have to have a bone folder to make clear cards. I've also been asked if they stand up, and I just wanted to show you there that yes, they will stand up on their own, at least when you buy that 10 mil. I continued cutting and folding that clear cardstock until I had all of my card bases ready. Now, once again, these five sheets will get you 10 card bases, so I did just save that extra for another project. Now I'm going to cut my off-white cardstock that I will place on the inside for my personal message that will be hidden by the piece on the front. If you print your sheet load of cards at 100%, you can just bring your ruler to that sketch and measure how large you want that to be. Mine was printed at 100%, so I just used my ruler and decided that I would cut that inner piece at 4.5 inches wide by 2.5 inches tall. I brought in two pieces of my off-white cardstock and I did stack those on top of each other for cutting. I cut two strips that were four and a half inches wide and then I rotated those and I cut until I had nine strips that were two and a half inches tall. After everything was cut, I did have some scraps of pattern paper and I will actually be using these later for that fishtail banner in the center. So make sure to hold on to those. The next step for me was to start matting the pattern paper pieces with their coordinating cardstock mat. If you have already watched that process video from the second, you will have already seen how I put these together. But just a reminder that per that sketch, you align these pieces of pattern paper either to the left or the right of their cardstock mat. The smaller pieces get aligned to the right and the larger pieces get aligned to the left. I continued matting the piece B's until I got to the very last piece. This is the one that I will use later on the sample where I make an inner card. So for now, I'm just going to set that to the side. I continue the same process until I have all nine sets with their coordinating mats. Because I will not be stamping onto CS1, I decided I would add a little texture to it with this wood grain embossing folder. 
So I brought in my cuddle bug and I ran those pieces through there with the embossing folder two at a time. You'll see here the difference that that texture makes. I just think it really adds something to cards, especially when I'm not adding any stamping to this piece. I continue running each one of those through until all nine have that wood grain texture. Now I'm going to work on the vertical strips that will go on the front of the card. I brought in the textured pieces that I just made. I added adhesive to the back of these and then it got placed aligned to the center top of the cardstock strip. Now I did discover that after running these pieces through that wood grain embossing folder that it really weakened it and some of them were tearing slightly. So I did my best to just be careful and get those onto the cardstock mat. Once the cardstock was in place, I added adhesive to the back of the pattern paper piece and this gets aligned to the bottom center of that same strip. Now there is a little bit of a weird overlap, but later that will be hidden by our fishtail banner decorations. I continued this same process and at first again I was being super careful with those wood grain pieces and then I had a light bulb moment. I started putting the adhesive on the cardstock strip and then bringing that textured piece to it and that worked out much better. I continued in this manner until I had all nine of those strips decorated. Now I'm going to show you how I cut another piece of that prickly pear cardstock so I would have an inner card for that one special sample. Once again, when this is folded, I need it to be two and three quarters inches tall by five and an eighth inches wide. So I cut this piece to ten and a quarter inches wide by two and three quarters inches tall and then it gets folded in half. Now I will tell you that I did prefer this card in the end. I just thought the opening was really fun, which you'll see later, but this would require quite a bit more cardstock. And since I have tons of white and off-white and ivory, I'm a little bit more frugal when it comes to my colored cardstock. Once the inner card was made, I added adhesive to the back of the pattern paper strip and added this to the front. Now don't forget, you will want it so it opens from left to right and then you will align the pattern paper strip to the right of that. Now that all of my main pattern pieces were matted, I went ahead and I put my little card kits together. Now I do go over this carefully in most of my process videos, but really what I do is I lay my pieces out so it goes pattern one, pattern two, pattern three in each of the pieces, and then I just mix and match those so that each piece is different on the card front, and then I have some variety in what the finished cards look like. Now that all of the main pieces were ready, I could start putting these cards together. I grabbed one of the little card kits I just made and I added adhesive to the back of the largest piece. This then got put on the inside of the card base aligned to the left. So once again there was only a border on the top, bottom, and right. Next I got out the medium sized piece of pattern paper or the piece B's, added adhesive to the back of that. This went on the front but this got aligned to the right just like that sketch shows. And finally, I added adhesive to the back of my cardstock piece for my personal message, and this got placed on the inside of the card, aligned with the right edge of the matted pattern paper, not the right edge of the cardstock. You'll see here that when the card is closed, you're not gonna be able to see that piece, so it will hide my personal message. I continued these same steps for all nine cards. Now while I work on some more of this, I thought it was a great time for the QOTV or the question of the video. I have thoroughly enjoyed recently asking you these questions and getting to know you better. Some of the answers have been just heartwarming to read. I've had some funny ones, but I just really have enjoyed hearing about each of you. Today's question is, what is your favorite kind of card to make? This could be a certain occasion, 
This could be a certain type of card, you know, like I like to make clear cards. It could be a size, a shape. Let me know in the comment section below and make sure to add the hashtag, hashtag QOTV to your comment so I know that you want me to read that. I will answer that question here in just a minute, but I wanted to slow down the video and point something out. I was having a heck of a time lining up the edges of my cardstock with that clear card base because it's clear. But of course I wanted my video to look pretty and I didn't want to put anything behind it. I discovered, I had another light bulb moment, that if I used the cardstock piece for the inside and just placed it behind the edge of the card base, that I could see that a lot more clearly and get those pieces lined up. Just a heads up if you're going to make some of these on your own. For my answer to the question, you of course know that I love clear cards, but besides that, I really like to make shaker cards and any kind of card with vellum. As for occasions, just because I use them most to send out, I like thinking of you cards or hello cards and then of course thank you cards. All of the card bases are together and here's a little look at the one with the inner card. I just think how each thing folds differently is so fun. Now we're going to work on the fishtail pieces for the sentiment slash image strip. Originally it called for a two and three quarters by three quarter inch piece. Because I will be using a special punch, I'm going to cut each of these to three inches wide and then for the green ones I will cut them to three quarters inches tall and the pattern paper pieces will get cut to a half an inch tall. I did bring in my little Fiskars photo bypass trimmer for this. The size of it is just a lot handier than bringing in that large trimmer. I just cut and punch these until I have nine of the green pieces and then six of each of the pattern paper pieces. When I cut the pattern paper pieces to half an inch tall, the first thing I did was cut each piece so it started at an even inch on my trimmer and then I just slid it from left to right a half an inch at a time. This was a lot quicker than measuring from the half inch mark, taking my pattern paper piece out, realigning with the half inch mark and just to keep doing that. Once all of those strips were cut, I then brought in my Stampin' Up! Pick a Banners punch and I put a fishtail in each end. I purposely cut these pieces to either a half an inch tall or three quarters inch tall because those are two of the sizes that fit in this punch. This you could do with just scissors and hand cut those, but this tool does make it so much faster and easier. I want to pause from the voiceover for just a second to say how much I appreciate you hanging in there with me for this video. I know normally by now my videos have been over five minutes ago, but I did think that everything I'm showing today is important and I wanted you to see it. And now back to the voiceover. The next thing I did was use stickers from that coordinating sheet and decorated the textured area of the card front. I grabbed one sticker and placed that down flat and then I chose a sentiment or an accent sticker to pop up off the card. Now because these stickers are already sticky, I placed dimensionals on the back of those and then I brought in my embossing buddy and I just tapped that on the back of the sticker so that when I pulled the release paper on the dimensionals, the only sticky part was the foam dots. And once again, I continued this same process with the stickers until I had decoration on all nine of the cards. And now it's time to finish these cards off with my little fishtail clusters. I will be placing two patterned paper fishtails along with one of the card stocks onto each of the card fronts. I chose the pattern papers by which one was at the bottom of the strip and which one was on the inside of the card. Now because I don't want like the boots to overlap with the boots pattern paper, that will go toward the top and then the flower paper goes toward the bottom. 
what I do is make a little V with the two pattern papers on top of the cardstock strip. I do pull these back, the pattern paper pieces, just a little bit to the right so that the cardstock fishtail hangs out more on the left. Once I have those in a good position, I brought in my little Tim Holtz mini stapler, added one of those to the end, and then I cut off that excess that was overhanging. Then adhesive got put on the back of this and it got placed onto the card front. These are just a nice way to jazz up something and it uses up some of your scraps. Now keep in mind if you want to do something like this, you don't necessarily have to have the little Tim Holtz mini stapler. You can use a regular size staple. Just know that you might have to use foam pieces or foam tape on this because the staple will be more bulky in the back. I continue making these flags until all nine cards are finished. And here's a close up look at each one. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made today's set of cards. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.